couple years ago, we tore down our staircase, which was riddled with termite damage and threatening to collapse at any moment, and we built a new one. Almost. When we got to the end, we slapped up some 2x4s as a temporary railing, and it pretty much stayed that way for the next two years. Anyway, I finally ran out of excuses and it's time to start building the iron railing that I was planning all along. I've sketched out the basic components of the project, but as usual, everything is subject to change along the way. Because our stairs have a closed stringer on the outside, the newels will be built straight up from the stringer with a plate that bolts to the outside, rather than from the top of the treads. The bottom rail is going to be one inch square tubing rotated to a 45 degree angle, and the top railing is going to be three quarter inch solid square bar. The balusters will be half inch square bar, which we're going to bend to this kind of swoopy curve. We're starting with the base of the newels, which we're cutting out of this scrap material that just happens to have the perfect bend for what we're planning. There's going to be four newels, each with a plate like this at the bottom that fastens to the outside of the stair stringer with lag screws. All right, so we've got some of our stanchions clamped into place now, and we're gonna start cutting out the pieces that go between the uprights. So we're making these pieces of one inch square tubing cut at an angle and also turned at a 45 degree. So they're gonna fit kind of in here like that. And we'll have these on the bottom and then up top we're going to have some solid square bar connecting them and then we'll follow that pattern for the rails that go between the stanchions. Because the lower rail needs to be held at a specific angle and rotation when we're tacking it on, we decided to make these little clamp-on brackets to help us not go insane. One fits to the uphill end of the rail and the other one holds the downhill end. When you're building a stair rail like this, you basically end up dealing with the same angle over and over again. You probably remember seeing some version of a construction like this in geometry where it's shown that all of these angles are equal and all of these angles are their supplement. Barring some sort of unique variation in your stair design, you'll probably have your chop saw set up at the exact same angle to cut both ends of your railings and the tops and bottoms of all of your newels and balusters. 
So this is the jig we built to reproduce the curve we're trying to achieve for our balusters. It's got this square hole on this end that holds the bar in the correct orientation while we bend to the curve defined by these pins. When we get to the part where the curve changes direction, we drop this piece in, which is keyed into place. We'll be using a rosebud torch to help us form the steel, and we'll be using various clamps all along the way to keep everything tight. You might notice that our workflow isn't very linear. Basically our process has been to build the newels and clamp them into place, then we cut the railings to fit between one section, tack weld them together, and then bring that section to the floor where we weld in the balusters and do as much of the finish work and paint as we can. Then we carry that section back up to its final position and move up the line. This process only makes sense because we're working on a staircase that ascends directly from our workshop. In any other situation, we wouldn't be doing this kind of back and forth, but since it's a workable option here, it allows us to ensure that all our parts fit exactly to the real world conditions of the staircase, while still doing the bulk of the fabrication and finish work in the comfort of our shop. You may also have noticed that in the course of this build, we've gone through several seasons of work clothes. The classic VW in the background went from a body on sawhorses to a finished and functional car, and my bald spot grew a few sizes bigger. This is not some kind of trick photography, it just actually took more than a year to film this whole process. That's how good we are at getting distracted. <laughs> The last section is going to be a little bit different because it needs to fit into a diminishing space as the stair stringer intersects with the beam that forms the opening to the second floor. After the first few balusters, I'm going to start bending smaller and smaller curves to fit the space. I'm going to just freehand these and sort of eyeball the geometry I need since I don't really know how else I could do it.
that's it. I hope you enjoyed watching.